So from the examples provided by the uh, examiner's notes from the previous three years of exams, which is how long we've been doing this comparative form or comparative multiple text language analysis for, um, and I'll give you an example that they've provided as an excellent example to show that the key is insight, which means what they're mostly focusing on is the level of detail, the understanding of the argument, and also the impressiveness of the vocab and how detailed and precise the kind of analysis is. So the example is she provides an idyllic, almost romanticized image where she imagines people who will eat at our beautiful bakery and socialize at our historic pub. This imparts a sense of uninterrupted tranquility, a tranquility which perhaps does not exist in the life of many readers, bringing to mind their own hectic schedules and routines. In this way, a desire for perfect serenity is evoked. In a blunt and almost brusque way, Wiley brings readers back to reality by asserting that we need their money, this serving to impart a sense of realism and perhaps urgency in that there may be a trade-off. This tranquility will not exist without this money. So you can see this is a good analysis of the text, but also what really jumps out is the level of vocab and the types of meta language that are used without and within. So here's another example. Both authors spark discussion about the beauty of their town and the effects of implementing a large tourist attraction. Wiley addresses the attraction as grand and soaring high, alluding to the idea that this will become something the town will be known for, compelling community members to feel proud for the town and its assets. Conversely, Warwick believes that this giant attraction will be ugly and a monstrosity, urging the council to realise that they may not want a huge, ugly attraction taking away from the beauty of their town. So you can see how small and how precise their quotes are dotted throughout the piece. Uh, and this one, again, you're looking for the key types of words are addresses, alluding, compelling, the type of vocab, implementing, uh, and the forms of normalization that they're using to really bring out this idea. So these are just three examples of the visual analysis and how you can do it. Uh, basically, I feel if you can do the text analysis really well, the visuals will come quite easily in a similar way. Uh, the method I usually use is simply what you see, what you don't see, therefore what you infer. So you do that quickly beside the image to give you a bit of an idea uh, and then you use that to make inferences from the text and how that would fit in with the, with the broader piece of the text. So in a similar manner the cartoon by the newspaper's cartoonist justifies the establishment of a giant mon monument. Jovial in mood the cartoon provides an insight into the construction of a monument. The clear so skies and scene represent the optimistic future of the town in the presence of the giant monument. The contrast of the empty highway versus the bustling town is symbolic of the town's exposure and its ability to combat adversity. The giant watermelon as a symbol of the town's fresh produce positioned beside the watermelon stand illustrates the project ability to generate revenue. In so doing, the cartoonist presents that the mayor as viable and suitable in assisting its economic state and exposure to a more global society. So I feel anyone could achieve that, but what separates it is the meta language and the level of detail provided. So vocab specifically like uh, adversity, uh, establishment, symbolism, those sort of words are really what makes this an excellent exemplar. Second one, the cartoon depicts a scenario in which the town has embraced the idea of constructing a large attraction and its quality of produce to attract tourists to the town. The ridiculous figure of a giant watermelon taller than trees in St. Martin's Church highlights the future of the town following the mayor's approach to construct large attractions. Furthermore, so again, comparative meta-language, the cartoon highlights how tourists can become, have become attracted to a giant watermelon and have lost focus on other treasures of the town, suggesting how the construction has resulted in tourists becoming less appreciative of the, of the town's unique qualities. Thus, the cartoon vilifies Wiley's approach that giant attack attractions will bring prosperity to the town and prompts readers to reflect where their values lie. So you can see this one's brought in a decent amount of effect. This may s implement the audience to feel, to reflect, to consider their values. That's good. Uh, the vocab that jumps out, of course, I've got furthermore as comparative, a lot of highlights, underlines, those sort of words uh, are used to bring out the symbolism and the importance of the cartoon to the overall argument.
So this one is slightly comparative. Uh, when the cartoon is viewed in tow with Warwick's letter, the audience discovers the cartoonist may perhaps be ridiculing Wiley's contention, arguing that Lawton will forever be immortalised as the home of the giant watermelon, one that will stick out like a sore thumb within the town centre, and not as the town of fresh produce and arts and craft that it wishes to purport itself to be. In highlighting the potential flaws behind such a construction, the cartoonist, similar to Warwick, intends to illustrate the salient flaws with Und with undergoing such a construction, leaving the audience to carefully reconsider the actual inspirational nature of building such attraction, of an attraction. So again, you can see the keywords you're pulling out, purport, uh, immortalized. You can see the level of detail is mostly in the vocab and how these, these three texts all use a wide range of vocab to really illustrate succinctly rather than explaining in lengthy sentences what the cartoon or the image provided.